Good morning. I want to talk today about the uh, seven key words of triadic philosophy. The seven key words are reality, meaning everything known and unknown, the mystery that surrounds us, not only in terms of the borders of whatever cosmos we happen to be in, depending on the theory that is prevalent, but also everything that happens in our lives is surrounded by mystery. <laughs> it's very hard to um, think about anything without understanding that, that the possibilities are endless as, as to what things mean. So there's reality, that's the first word. Ethics is the second term in the triad that, that I think ought to ground all conscious thought. And the final word in the triad is aesthetic. So it's R-E-A, reality, ethics, aesthetics. And aesthetics, it seems to me, is an evolution in philosophy since people like Nietzsche and Peirce were sort of grasping at some way of talking about ethics that, that didn't uh, come off as horribly moralistic and, uh, and, in effect, impossible to for human beings to achieve. Well, if we... Uh, dismantle the the uh, art world that, <laughs> that we have inherited and uh, reclaim uh, art as a universal aspect of reality, then we uh, get somewhere and we come up with that fundamental triad of reality, ethics, and aesthetics. And the next term is democracy. When we get into ethics, we come up with four fundamental keywords that compose the actual values which underlie, I believe, progress in the cosmos, in our world. Why do I believe that? Because I look at people like Martin Luther King and Gandhi and people that advanced history and I assume that they operated on these same values. The first value is democracy. So read, R-E-A-D, Reality, Ethics, Aesthetics, Democracy. Those are the first four letters. And then I get to... The second, or in this acronymic order uh, term, and that's non-idolatry, and that's an underlying value that more or less means have no other gods before me, as it were. In other words, don't worship anything on earth, nothing on the planet, uh, is something you should bow down to or give full authority to. You should be a critical, iconoclastic observer of the world that you're in. So, the uh, last two words are tolerance, meaning, in my view, not wishy-washy permissiveness, as Mr. Marcuse once accused of tolerance of being, but also what it means, what it means is strength. Strength. Tolerance is strength. You can tolerate a lot. And then, helpfulness. And helpfulness, incidentally, is, is not uh, this obtrusive uh, sort of of cloying uh, business of, of uh, apparently, I, I read a little thing in the New York Times of Mad Men about, about uh, some guy who's 
who is uh, obtrusively helpful. And I suppose uh, these days on the internet, there's so much emphasis on, on you know, being helpful to other people and all that kind of thing that, that, that the actual meaning of help uh, as a value, helpfulness as a value is, is simply, you know, we live in a world of harm. We live in a world of, of pervasive harm and, and helping is uh, reducing that. So, R-E-A-D-N-I-T-H, readneth, maybe a Welsh term for triadic philosophy. I think that's enough for today.